Good morning. Welcome back. You're still watching Kenya's Choice on this um, 23rd day of August 2022. And of course, it is the first day as we are counting the 14 days that the Supreme Court has to hear and determine the petitions that have been filed before them. And that has to be concluded by the 5th of September. I'm in studio with uh, Joe Halende, who is a lawyer. Good morning. Good morning. I'm also with Suleiman Bashir, an advocate. Good morning. Good morning, sir. And uh, we're waiting to be joined by Charles Kanjama, who is also an advocate, uh, to go through, through <coughs> the a process of uh, petitioning at the Supreme Court in regards to the presidential election. And of course, we'll be talking about some details that are in there. I want to begin by looking at the papers this morning. On the front page of the Daily Nation, was it stolen is the question they're asking. Um, legal fight. In a separate petition, Omtata says none of the candidates achieved the threshold. The smoking gun in bombshell petition to the Supreme Court, Raila Odinga exposes what he says was a well-oiled scheme to rig this year's election, including the recruitment of hackers to infiltrate the results portal and alter forms and, and the inflation of votes in favor of Ruto across the country, and especially in his strongholds for these fraudulent schemes. The Azimio leader wants Ruto win invalidated. You see extensive coverage of what there is. And Raila's prayers to the court are indicated there that William Bruto did not meet the threshold of 50% plus one of all the votes cast based on what Raila's lawyers say is an analysis of voter turnout and total votes cast in the DP's favor. William Ruto was not validly declared as president-elect and therefore Fuller Chibukati's declaration to that effect made on August 15 is invalid. Chabukati's declaration of results should be nullified and IBC directed to tally and verify the count and declare Raila Odinga and Martha Karua the president-elect and deputy president-elect respectively. In the alternative order, that order that the IBC has presently constituted is incapable of presiding over a credible presidential election and that means should there be a rerun, the current commission would not oversee it. The decision by IBC commissioners Juliana Cherera uh, Justice Nyangaya, Francis Wanderi, and Irene Masit rejecting the declaration by Wafula Chibukati is consistent with the Constitution and should be upheld. And all votes affected by irregularities are invalid and should be struck off, and the genuine results should be tallied and verified as the valid outcome of the election. That's what um, one Raila Odinga is asking the court to find. And of course, uh, we know that William Bruto is declared winner after securing 50.49% of the votes, according to the presidential election returning officer. On the front page of the standard, Raila, my case against IBC, as mere leader, wants the Supreme Court to scrutinize the results and declare declare him president-elect. Should that not pass, he wants the court to order IBC to preside over a fresh election. Raila also wants Chibukati declared incompetent and unfit to hold public office. And of course, there's so many of the stories that you see there, but for now, let's focus on the petitions that have been filed against um, the presidential election petition. There are eight of them, and now adding Moses Kuria's across a petition that sort of wants to blame Ray Lodinga for the chaos that were witnessed at the bombers of Kenya. Let me begin with you, Bashir. How are you receiving these petitions? And as you look at them, what options does the Supreme Court have in determining them? Thank you, Sam. I think uh, for me, firstly, I give you to the right on Raburai Laudinga. Um, you know, it takes a lot for one to dispute the outcome of an election, but again, to be committed to follow the due process of law. And I think that is something that uh, keeps nature in our democracy. And it's something that just that that, that uh, in as much as it's just dealing with this particular electoral election petition, it, it gives the entire country the impression that we are a country that is governed by the rule of law. So I think a lot of credit goes to him. The sheer action of himself to submit himself um, uh, to the courts of law mm -hmm. is quite commendable. When you look at when I look at uh, what has happened yesterday, we have seen a lot of petitions and one cross pet one sort of cross petition. I think um, what I foresee is a scenario whereby um, there'll be consolidation of these petitions because the issues are largely the same. Majority of the issues and majority I mean the issues in majority of the petitions are seeking mm -hmm. to have an analysis of the presidential election and the, and the, and, the out, and the outcome of it so that uh, we ha we either have an, an analysis or other prayers that are more or less the same in, in, in all the petitions. Mm -hmm. So I think when you look at the issues that as they are framed, there are a lot of similarities with the issues. When you look at the respondents, the issues, I mean, the respondents are largely the chairperson of the commission uh, and the various commissioners right. and also the president-elect at some point. And I think the only com the only the only petition that uh, that um, takes a shift away from the rest is the one that has been filed by one Moses Courier. And I think uh, 
that one, when you look at the prayers he's trying to seek for, he's trying to have the conduct of the right honorable Raila Odinga, either directly or indirectly, to be declared as being illegal and to, uh, and, and to have been so much directed at, uh, at interfering with, a, with, with, a, with, an inter, with, a, with an electoral process that is enshrined in our constitution. And I think, for me, I see to it that one of the petitions shall be given the priority over the others, and that it will more or less be the Raila Odinga petition, in as much as the petitions shall be consolidated. With respect to the petition that has been filed by uh, Honorable Moses Kuria, the respondent is the right Honorable Raila Odinga, and the second respondent is the Azimio Laomoja coalition. Mm -hmm. And that tells you that this may not be uh, even regarded as a cross petition, because it is not a response from the side of those who are sued, maybe on, on the part of IABC or the president elect. I, I, I am so keen to see the, the, the direction that the Supreme Court shall give with respect to the petition by Moses Kuria, but the rest of the petitions mm -hmm. shall be consolidated because more or less they have the same issues and the same parties uh, in substance. In your view, for Moses Kuria's case, which sounds like um, touching on election offenses, uh, does it belong uh, in the Supreme Court? You see, um, when he's trying to have a look at the conduct of an individual during the electoral process, that I think falls within the realm of investigating bodies. It is for that particular conduct have been investigated by the investigating agencies so that we can have the way forward. I think uh, um, with a lot of uh, respect to that particular petition, and even as we are keen to see how, it, how the, the kind of direction that shall be given on that, mm -hmm. I, 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 I feel um, 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 it's, it's sort of misplaced in a way. Okay. Joe, what's your take about the uh, petitions? Eight of them plus one. Yeah, my take on all the petitions, uh, majorly is just a strategy to strengthen the one major petition, which is uh, Raila Odinga Mata Karua versus IBC and others. Uh, because you look at the other petition, like Paul Njoroge petition, Kag Kagame petition, and uh, the rest of the petition, they are, and Okio Mutata's petition, they are squarely emphasizing most of the issues that have been raised in the Raila Odinga's petition. Mm -hmm. So it's a strategy that uh, the Azmio group have used to strengthen their case. But uh, going forward is that uh, I want to echo what my good brother said, that as a country, mm -hmm. as a democracy, we have matured and we have moved a step ahead compared to other countries within our region. Because after the election, and there was a dispute from that election, it is within the law and it's our constitutional right to dispute it through a due process. Mm -hmm. And that's what we are seeing from the Azmio team. Uh, moving away from the initial or from the our past character of starting to do demonstrations and going the other route against the or protesting the results. So it's a step ahead and what we will do as a country is to sit and wait and give the Supreme Court time mm -hmm. to listen which the timelines are within two weeks okay. to listen and determine the petition. But Kenyans, I want to urge Kenyans also to be alive to the fact that this same same Supreme Court was given a, a duty and responsibility to listen and determine issues from BBI, and they did a wonderful job, and everybody went home satisfied. So I'm hoping that this time round also, we are going to be given uh, the same verdict from the same Supreme Court, which will leave everybody satisfied, and once and for all, we finish this electioneering process, we move on as a country. Mm. But, mm. Bashil, you, uh, there's yeah. something you want to add. Yeah, and, and Sam, yes. when, you, when you have a look at um, so many petitions right. that are more or less uh, trying to, to maybe challenge the outcome of a certain electoral process, um, generally when you're drafting a petition, petitions tend to have a, fact, a background. You're trying to give out the reasons as to why you're seeking for certain reliefs. Mm -hmm. The interesting, I mean, it's quite uh, advantageous when you have more than one petition because the, bag, the way you bring, the way one petition brings out the particular background it is centered on in as much as they're all seeking for the for the for the sim, for a similar outcome mm -hmm. uh, one petition might end up bringing the outcome i mean the background better than the other one i think in as much as all uh, all seem to be coalescing towards uh, having an annulment of the outcome of that particular process the background matters a lot so uh, it's quite advantageous for the petitioners one petition might be the one to bring out that particular background and you know at the end of the day the supreme court shall have a look at 
everything that has been presented before it mm -hmm. and uh, the best of the best uh, shall carry the day and and some of the other things that we are also looking forward to is when you have more than eight like uh, the, uh, the eight or so petitions that we have in at the moment that seem to be angling towards the same direction we are, we are we shall be keen to see so many legal representatives from each and every from all these side of the quarters meaning mm -hmm. the supreme court shall also be uh, be at an be at a vantage point of listening to so many legal minds you know that ends up contributing to the jurisprudence and and and, and it will end up, it will end up uh, uh, growing the wisdom that, that that we have in the supreme court look at it uh, some this way um, in 2013 we had a petition in 2017 we had two petitions and now we seem to be having the fourth petition i think our supreme court now it we cannot easily wish it away. You know, when you look at the kind of a case that was filed in Zimbabwe and I think the likes of Namibia, they ended up alluding to the outcome of our of, of our Supreme Court of our, of our 2017 presidential petition number one. That tells you that the Supreme Court that we're having today is not the so kind of Supreme Court that we had in 2017 because we seem to be having one that is uh, that, that is quite resourceful, the one that tends to be having more researchers, one that tends to be having uh, good minds up there. And I think the ball shall be in their court in 14 days. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering, because when you look at those petitions, we will get to the content proper. But first, the list of uh, respondents, they keep varying because one, you'll find IBC, as an entity, then you find Chairman Wafulechi Bukati as the returning officer, the six commissioners listed as um, respondents, the Attorney General, you'll see another petitions, Railo Ding is a respondent, Rigadi Gashago is a respondent, William Root is a respondent. Uh, so uh, close to 15 respondents in total. With the commissioners, Joe, they have each to be represented by a specific advocate or they can agree to be represented by one team? Yeah, uh, for for the reasons that uh, some of the petition are varying with the with the respondent, it's basically because of the issues that the those particular petitioners are raising. So it must correspond with the respondent. And uh, on the sec on that second matter that you have asked about uh, the interested parties mm. that have been that have been listed, they will be. Others will be, because specifically for, for the four IBC commissioners, they may decide each individually to be represented individually, and they can also decide to consolidate and be presented by one, uh, by one advocate. So it's up to their strategy and how to. But looking at this matter and this particular matter, mm -hmm. what the teams are trying to do is try to, is try to, to, to go for extensity over intensity so that they, they, they maximize on the issues that they have raised mm -hmm. so that they can manage to sway or convince the Supreme Court to rule on their side. Okay, um, well, and, and yourself, because of all those lists of uh, respondents and um, the interested parties, what, what would be the better thing to do? Because very little time, because if the pretrial conference is happening on the eighth day, with just six days to go, uh, what is the best route to make sure that you, you use the time available wisely? You see, Sam, the players here are so many, uh, but there are so many crucial, there are, there, there are specific crucial players in this particular process. One being uh, the commission, um, and the, you know, in, in this sense, we are talking about the chairperson, and we also we are also talking about the various commissioners. And I think the reason as to why someone is listing the chairperson of the commission, and again listing the commissioners uh, different separately, is because of even um, the kind of positions that they have taken towards the the declaration of the presidential uh, result. The reason as to why also the president elect is listed as an interested party or even as a respondent in some cases, it is because he has been issued with a certificate, and someone somewhere wants that particular certificate given to him to be revoked. In other words we are trying to give him the platform to give a response, to be given an opportunity to be heard, so that if at all that certificate shall be shall be shall be revoked, <coughs> sorry, then on, in that regard at least he will have been given an opportunity. So I think uh, when it comes to the particular commissioners who have been listed as interested parties, it is up to them to either get themselves advocates or even appear in court in person, or even uh, um, uh, um, the same applies to all the other respondents where you have uh, where you have the likes of the IEPC chairperson himself. In other words, in uh, at some point someone is listed as. Um, someone has only listed as the Independent Electoral Boundaries Commission as a, as, as, a, as a whole. And I think what, what some we, we anticipate is that uh, if I'm listed in one case as an interested party, I can just get myself one advocate to represent me in 
in all the others. In other words, if it is consolidated, that particular advocate shall be the one to, rep to represent me. Mm -hmm. If we are four, four, four of the IEBC commissioners and we just want to get ourselves one advocate, one advocate can still represent us. So I think it is up to the discretion of the respondents to get themselves the kind of advocates they need. But what we are looking at, what we, what we are also staring at is uh, so many others who might put in applications to be enjoined in this particular case. I think uh, that might end up uh, being something huge. But I think uh, looking at the timelines and what, uh, and what we have learned of the 2017 petition, the Supreme Court has always had a way of making it strict for any party who is interested in being uh, part and parcel of this uh, petition. Mm -hmm. So it's a wait and see game, but uh, when it comes to the number of advocates who can represent one, it is up to their own discretion. As a commissioner, you can, uh, you, you can, you can holistic, you, you can as a team get yourself one advocate, or each and every each and every commissioner can get himself or herself her own advocate. And what we're also looking at is a scenario whereby, because this, uh, the process that we have before the Supreme Court is a process whereby the evidences that shall be relied on shall largely be introduced by way of uh, affidavits. You know, we don't expect them to be present in court. That, in a way, reduces the kind of burden that, this, that, that, uh, that the judges shall be having with respect to addressing this. Compare that with the other petitions, uh, the other ordinary petitions away from this particular presidential petition. The others come even in court. They are, they, 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 they are examined uh, uh, physically in, uh, in court. The reason as to why that has been done away with also, it is also with respect to the timelines of 14 days. And I think, uh, some it's a wait and see game even as we go forward. Right. I'm just wondering, the oddity of uh, this season, because I'm looking at the petition of uh, 2017, the petition number one of 2017, um, presidential election petition, that is. Um, it was be between Raila Odinga and uh, Stephen Kalonzo, of course, being the first and second petitioner. And there were, the respondents were IABC itself as a, a corporate uh, entity, then chair of the IABC, then Uhuru Kenyatta as the president-elect then. And that was the end of the respondents. For Dr. Ikuro and Professor Michael Wanaina, they were interested parties. And then there were some uh, friends of the court, the Attorney General and the Law Society of Kenya, very lean team. Now, this time round, you have each of the commissioners of IBC listed as um, respondent. And of course, we know what has happened the past few days. How then, how difficult does it become for IBC to really defend, uh, defend its case while four out of three commissioners have taken a different uh, direction? Uh, IBC, IBC and uh, Chebukati and the f four other commissioners who outrightly denied and said they are not going to be part and parcel of the declaration that was made uh, during that day. So it actually what that does, it makes that these four commissioners individually or collectively Mm -hmm. are going to take a different route from what IBC and the Chairman Chebukati are going to do. Mm -hmm. Which means that uh, in the end, the four, the four commissioners are going to be used or are going to be somehow to be against what Chebukati and IBC will be filing in court. So technically it, it gives you an avenue where Chebukati and IBC and the four will have different uh, different uh, arguments in court, but the most interesting part is that the four are listed as interested parties in the matter, so they will be doing it at a different level as compared to Chebukati, who is the main respondent and IBC. The, the, the actual respondents in some of the uh, petitions, uh, for instance, uh, the one by uh, the Youth Advocacy Africa, I'm just trying to look at uh, the one by Ray Dinga to see how they are listed. And it's, yes, here it is. So they are actually respondents, not uh, interested parties. So, sort of. So, Bashir, what does it mean if you're an interested party and if you're a respondent in practical terms? <coughs> what does it entail? in terms of the submissions that you have to make before court? Sam, if, I, if today I take you to court and I list you as a respondent, I will need you to overcome certain allegations that I'm labeling against you. So in this regard, let me just even uh, describe the way the Ray Laudinga petition, this the one that we are now staring at, the way it has been fashioned. Mm -hmm. Where we have in, uh, the commissioners listed as respondents, we expect them to come over the allegations that should be labeled against them. Meaning, 
these particular papers, the pleadings that will be filed in court by the petitioner, shall be served upon them. You will have a look at that particular pleadings, and they'll be given an opportunity to respond to the same. In other words, here somebody is asking the IEBC, is trying to question them. You have undertaken, you are, you are the ones who are in charge, you are charged with this particular process. And you ended up giving this certificate to somebody, and you announced him as the winner. Mm -hmm. I need you to explain yourself in this, because I do not believe that you have followed the, the, the necessary laws. Where you have the same, same commissioners listed as interested parties, when, where you are listed as an interested party, you have the leeway of taking sides. You can either um, challenge what has been served upon you, or you can end up corroborating that particular claims that someone has with against you. In other words, you are allowed to take whatever positions you want. If we compare this with someone who has been listed, or someone who might be uh, an amicus, someone who might be interested in being a friend of the court, mm -hmm. and that is the position that is mostly adopted by the likes of the AG or even the LSK, these are experts who are trying to assist the court in the dispensation of justice. In other words, they are trying to bring on board some expertise. So Sam, where we have these commissioners listed as interested parties, or even the respondents, either way, these particular commissioners shall be having the opportunity to share with the court their part or their side of the story. And I I think the difference, the, the, the card will be different where, some, where, where someone is merely an amicus. Where you, where, yeah. So I, I think where we have at the moment, what we have at the moment, as I've said, the Raila petition, the one that has been filed by Raila and mother, shall be the one that shall be given the priority. Even um, without wishing away the other petitions, when you look at the petition that was filed by Oke Omtata, it raises some very good grounds. It has some, some, some things that are worth uh, giving attention to. And I think, for me, when I looked at all the petitions, I, I regard it as the second most serious petition. We're looking at the way, the way he has framed his issues, the way he has given the factual background, and the way he has tried to, to the kind of relief he has tried to seek. Okay. So some, at the end of the day, it doesn't make any difference, but the reason as to why we have been one, as some of the commissioners all listed as either the respondents or as the interested parties, at the moment we are staring at a commission that is not speaking with one voice. Initially, we had a commission that was coming from one side. At the moment, we have seven commissioners, four of which have taken a particular side, who have tried to distance themselves of the particular electoral process. Meaning, if I'm the petitioner, I would want them to adduce the evidence and share with the court why they are not uh, believing in the kind of outcome that we have had. The other commission, the, the remaining commissioners will equally, and the chairperson would want to now share with the court their side of the story, meaning they want to tell the court, we have undertaken this particular due process, and the outcome in this regard has been valid, and that is why we have arrived at this particular decision. So the reason as to why the cuts are different is because of the particular different uh, uh, games and different positions the, the, some of the commissioners have taken up. Joe, are they duty bound uh, to respond? Yes, they are respondents, but must they? Yes, they must respond. They are, it's, it's a constitutional mandate that they were given to, to, to be within the, to work at the IBC. And now that the IBC is being, is being accused, or rather IBC was the one which was in charge of the election, as the commissioners, they are duty bound to, to respond. And also in terms of, uh, in terms of what they have the different strategy or the different games that are ongoing in IBC, mm -hmm. they will be duty bound to respond so that at the end of the day, we, they can be able to substantiate the allegations or they are not be able to substantiate them. So it's a must that they must respond and they must be represented to try and at least give their side of the story mm -hmm. because they, they at first, like the four commissioners, at first they gave us a, con a press briefing alleging that they are not going to be part and parcel of the pronouncement. On the second day, they gave us the story behind it. So they are part and parcel of this court case and they must give their side of the story. And, oh, okay. and, and, and some just to add, yes. where you have uh, someone who has been stated, uh, listed as a respondent, failure by that person to respond will give the petitioner the leeway to seek for the prayers he or she is seeking for. Okay. The court will just want to confirm, did you serve the pleadings as directed upon this other party? Mm -hmm. Has he been given the necessary opportunity to be heard? If he has chosen not to be heard, that means the petitioner shall have his way. And, then, and, and I think other, other, uh, that is generally, that's the general rule. It applies to 
to public offices to even private individuals. Generally, if someone is given an opportunity to be heard and you do not appreciate that particular chance to equally come before court and give you a side of the story, mm -hmm. the court shall end up uh, playing play into the music and, and the prayers that the petitioner is seeking for. Okay, very interesting. And that reminds me of uh, some uh, judgment and some prayers that had been granted in the BBI case against uh, President Uru Kenyatta, but that was overturned uh, by the higher courts, uh, saying that he was never accorded that opportunity for natural rules of justice. Bob Otieno, uh, or rather Bob Owino, yes, Otieno Owino is saying that this time round the petition against President-elect uh, William Ruto doesn't have a weight like the outgoing President Uhuru case in 2017. I don't know how you measure that way to we'll be <clears throat> talking about that, but getting into deeper details about um, the specifics and what appears to be the overriding theme across the, um, the eight petitions and then looking at Moses Kuria's petition after the break.